Numbers! You can learn a lot from them, but they're not very visual. These numbers tell us a lot about the climate of London, but there's a nicer way to present them. That would be a climate graph. Climate graphs help us to quickly and easily look at the year-round climate of a specific place. Most basic climate graphs show two things, temperature and precipitation. If you're not familiar with the word precipitation, it just means all the different ways water transfers from the sky to earth. So rain, snow, sleet, hail, all of that added together. Then we just have the months of the year across the top of the table. So we can easily see that in January, the average temperature is 4.8 degrees Celsius and 59 millimeters of precipitation falls on average. February is a little warmer with an average of 4.9 degrees Celsius and it's a bit drier with an average of 50 mil of precipitation and so on. We'll start this graph off by drawing the x-axis which will show the months of the year. So we're going to need 12 spaces for that. You'll find that some climate graphs label the x-axis with a shortened version of each month. Some use numbers, so month 01 is January, 02 is February, 03 is March, and so on. But most climate graphs simply use the first letter of each month. Let's make sure the x-axis is labelled too. Next up, we'll add a y-axis. Why? Because we want to. We're going to plot the temperature against the axis. The highest number we have in our data is 17.8 degrees Celsius, so I think the numbers on this axis should go up in fives, up to 20. And again, it's always good to make sure the axis is labelled. Climate graphs have a second Y axis. This is the one that we're going to use to show precipitation. It looks like the largest number we have here is 67 mil, so I think this Y axis can go up to 80, 10 at a time. And yep, better label it. At this point, we should probably tell you that you might also see climate graphs that show temperature in Fahrenheit and precipitation in inches. Yes, America, we're talking to you. We're not saying that one unit is better than the other. Oh wait, yes we are. Celsius is better. Stop being weird and use Celsius already, America. It's time we put our data on this graph starting with precipitation. This is always shown using bars and those bars are often, though not always, blue. So January had 59 millimeters of precipitation and we need that to match the correct Y axis. So that has to match up to here. And then we add our bar. February is 50 mil, which is here. And we add another bar. March is 47 mil and so on, all the way to the end of the year. Now for the temperature. Temperature is plotted as a line graph, usually in red. January averages 4.8 degrees Celsius. Just like before, it's important to make sure we line it up with the correct Y axis. Then we put a little dot or a cross in the middle of the January section. Then we do the same for February, which is 4.9, March, which is 6.7, and for the rest of the months of the year. Now that's done, we'll just join it all up with a curved line. Ooh, that's really satisfying to watch. And there we are, one climate graph. Actually, yeah, this is just one climate graph, and other ones can look very different to this. We're going to need to make some changes to our y-axis to show you what we mean. Firstly, we're going to change our temperature axis so it starts at minus 70 Celsius all the way up to 50 Celsius. You can do that on a climate graph, don't worry. Oh, let's also add a little dotted line in so we know where zero is. On the other side, our precipitation scale is going to need to go all the way up to 400 mil. Yep, things are about to get wild. So we'll start by putting London back on here. Remember, this is the same information as before, it's just been squashed up a lot to match the new scales we put on our y-axis. But where shall we show next on our climate graph? 
Ah, I know. London is in the Northern Hemisphere, so the warmer months are around June, July and August. If we were to choose somewhere in the Southern Hemisphere, like Sydney in Australia, their seasons are the other way around, and they receive their warmest weather in December, January and February. But we can go a bit weirder than that. How about Manau in Brazil? It's located in the Amazon rainforest, which has, as you know, a lot of rain. Check out the temperature too. It's really consistent all year round, staying between 25 and 27 degrees Celsius. So that's a tropical rainforest. How about a dessert? Ah, sorry, it's dinner time. A desert. Well, here's Death Valley in the USA. As you would expect, the precipitation is extremely low all year round. After all, it needs less than 250 millimeters across the whole year to technically be a desert. But you might be surprised by how much cooler it gets during some parts of the year. And finally, here is the climate graph for Vostok Research Station in Antarctica, the coldest place on Earth. And, um, well, yeah, it's very, very cold all year round. But check out the precipitation as well. There's even less than Death Valley when you add it all up. That's right, Antarctica is in fact a desert. This video is the first in a two-parter about climate graphs. In the next one, we're going to take a look at more advanced climate graphs that can show you more than just temperature and precipitation. We also love answering any geography questions you have, so please do ask them in the comments if you want to know more about anything in this video. Give us a subscribe and a like if you found this interesting or helpful, and we'll see you in part two.